Hey everybody, ABC 10 meteorologist Brendan Menchef here. Happy New Year, at least happy new water year, I suppose I should say. Uh, it is now October and the water year resets every year on October 1st here in California. Uh, and so that means we're into the new water year and we're already a little bit below average by a hundredth of an inch. We can make that up pretty easily. It's just, uh, you know, we are into that new year. Hopefully we'll see some rainfall and uh, get ahead of the curve and stay ahead of the curve this year. That'd be nice. This is what it looked like for the water year. These were the numbers for September. We're kind of going to ignore that column. Let's talk about this column here. So again, the water year that was October 1st, 2021 to September 30th, 2022. We saw over 16 and a half inches of rain. Pretty good. But the average that we typically see is over 18 inches of rain. So our departure from normal, uh, again, not all that bad, but it was about an inch and a quarter from where we normally would be. But that was somewhat hyper-local to Sacramento, if you will, because if you look at Stockton, they saw 9.8 inches of rain, Fresno 6.4 inches, San Francisco 18.4 inches of rain, South Lake Tahoe actually did very well, almost 20 inches of rain, and Redding also almost 20 inches of rain. But that doesn't really mean anything until we look at the departure from normals on these. So Sacramento did, they did, we did all right in Sacramento. South Lake Tahoe did very well, uh, almost got towards even there. And San Francisco also did okay. But then you look at Stockton, you look at Fresno, over three and a half inches uh, below where they normally would be. And then Redding. Redding saw over a foot of rain less than what they normally would see. They're down 13, uh, almost 14 inches on the water year. And that's where, that's why we say, well, Sacramento did all right, but some of the other regions in Northern California, California did not. And especially at the further north you go in California, it was a very dry year. And that's where a lot of the reservoirs are. So we would like to see a lot of rain up there. It, it, it didn't really happen this year. Uh, and it really didn't happen for Southern California either. Santa Barbara over six and a half inches below. Here's what the latest drought monitor looks like. And it looks very similar to the last few weeks. We really have not seen any changes in the drought monitor. Severe drought still over half of the state. Extreme drought covers 24% of the state. That is that lighter red color. And then the exceptional drought still uh, in the uh, really San Joaquin Valley down towards Fresno, 17% uh, of the state is in that exceptional drought. But we did okay. We made some progress from where we started the water year. So we started the water year with 42% of the state in that extreme drought category in that lighter red exceptional drought, almost half the state, 46% of the state of California. When we started this water year that was, uh, was in that 46%, that exceptional uh, highest level drought category. Again, here's what it looked like when we finished. This is what the map looks like now. We did a lot better. We were able to eliminate some of that drought, especially in Northern California, but we still have a long way to go when it comes to drought. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. I mean, we kind of talked about that in previous weeks. We'll talk a little bit more about it when we talk about this coming winter. But when we look at where this water year ranks in terms of wettest, well, it was the 76th wettest year out of 130 in the Sacramento Valley. It was the 88th wettest out of 130 in the San Joaquin Valley. That's all right. It wasn't the wettest by far. It also wasn't one of the driest we've ever had in those two areas, uh, but it was the 109th wettest out of 130. That's a pretty dry year for the deserts of Southern California when we put on the aridity index. And so this takes into effect the average high temperature departure and how far above or below average in terms of precipitation we were takes into effect both of those things and considering we've had a really hot year and we've had a really dry year, uh, you would expect a lot of these numbers uh, to be fairly dry. And in fact, they are. So the Sacramento Valley has a 1.9 on the aridity scale. Uh, that's all right, you know, kind of kind of uh, near that zero number, which is where, uh, our, where average would be is right near zero. Uh, 2.3 though for the San Joaquin Valley. So this shows, which we saw in the numbers a little while ago, uh, this confirms it, that the San Joaquin Valley saw less rain and was and still is drier than the Sacramento Valley is. But even compared to the deserts of Southern California, uh, we, we did all right in the Central Valley because the deserts, even though they're the desert and they don't see a lot of rain, it was a very dry year down there. They got a 4.4 on the aridity index, and that means that things are incredibly dry right now, again, in the deserts of SoCal. So especially in the Sacramento Valley, we did okay. But if you look at this one here, it's a little harder to see because it is in the, it's almost white. Uh, the, that 0.6, that's the high Sierra. They did pretty well, actually. They're almost, again, made it towards average, which we saw with those uh, South Lake Tahoe uh, numbers on the year. They were less than half an inch below where they should be. 
Let's talk about now. Let's uh, talk about this October, this coming winter, because we're starting to slowly work our way into that rainy season. In October, we typically see over eight tenths of an inch of rain. In November, over an inch and a half of rain and over three inches uh, in December, January and February. So we are working into our rainiest months now very slowly. Uh, but what can we expect? You know, what what is what is the winter hold? And we can look at climate outlooks. We can look at uh, climate models. It's no guarantee that that's what will happen. Uh, but let's dive down, uh, dive in to those uh, climate outlooks and those climate models. This is going to be very technical, so stay with me here. As we look at the October, November, December precipitation outlook from the Climate Prediction Center, you see we're in white here in Northern California. They're expecting a very average winter, which is good news, right? And, and that's sort of what we would expect uh, in a La Nina year, where it's kind of a toss-up. Equal chances will be above, equal chances will be below. Let's break it down a little further. This graph uh, looks kind of intimidating. There's a lot of information in it. There is a lot of information on this graph, let me tell you what. But it boils down to this. There's a 33% chance that will be above average this coming October, November, December in terms of precipitation. There's a 33% chance will be right at average or very close to the average this coming October, November, December. There's also a 33% chance that will be below average this coming October, November, December in terms of rainfalls. And so that's, that's why we saw uh, that map just a second ago. It was in white because it's, again, equal chances will be above, below, or right near average uh, in terms of precipitation. Let's break it down even a little further. The North American Multi-Model Ensemble, this is one of the things the Climate Prediction Center uses to kind of forecast, to make that map that you just saw, forecast the rainfall uh, that may or may not show up this winter. This is a map specifically for October in terms of precipitation. And, you know, we'd really like to see some greens and blues there instead of those yellows, oranges, and reds, uh, because that means it is expected, uh, according to this set of data, that October will be drier than average. Here's November, slightly better news for November. We're kind of right on the line right here between slightly above average to well above average and then to slightly below average. So again, right on the line, November, according to this set of data, does look like it'll be wetter than October. Of course, this is no guarantee. We could see a big storm in October for one day and see nothing else. And that could still, uh, you know, make this map look like we would be above or below average. Same story in November. We could get one big storm and that could be it. Or we could get several days, maybe even a week's worth of rain uh, in November. And that's kind of what this map is showing is we're right there on that line. Here's December though. December, one of our rainiest months. And this model, the NMME, is suggesting December may actually be quite dry here in Northern California. But this is just one set of data. Let's look at the European for November. This is the European model again same map but different uh, different equation if you will it's crunching the numbers differently it's translating that data differently and it's giving us a different answer and you can see in november the european model actually has the entire state of california at or above average in terms of rainfall which would be really nice if we're looking and comparing the two months we would definitely want this one to happen uh, because we of course do need that rain to bust the drought uh, but to kind of summarize here and look at the season as a whole so october november and December, the NMME kind of has this a little bit drier, but also right on the line in Northern California between a very near average and a below average season. But generally, the state of California below average. If we look at the European outlook for October, November, December, uh, it, it does have us above average, near or above average, especially in Northern California, where you see that green here. That would be welcome news if we can get some uh, some rainfall and end up by the time we get towards the new year 2023 it'd be nice if we could actually be above average in terms of rainfall especially considering these next four months october november december january are some of our rainiest months and october november december are three very important months when it comes to rainfall we would like more than just one storm like we had last year we kind of had that storm in october and that was pretty much it until december you know if we can have a few storms spaced out in october some more in november some more in december that'd be really nice that would help us uh, out with the drought, but we shouldn't make any specific assumptions, if you will, based on just these two maps. You know, this is just two answers to a very complex question uh, of will we see rainfall in La Nina, El Nino, those things really do impact our weather here in Northern California. Uh, but California as a whole, if you think about the state with all the mountains, with all the coastal uh, differences, all the terrain differences we have, 
all the elevation differences. It can be very hard for these numbers to actually spit out an answer that's anything close to realistic. And in some cases, it's really not any better or just slightly better, perhaps, than a coin flip. These models, we've, we're actually evaluating some of the historical skill, like how accurate these things for um, seasonal forecast in California. And, you know, it's better than a coin flip, but uh, not so great. Um, <laughs> it's like it's notoriously a hard place for our typical tools from a climate forecasting perspective to do a good job. And that's a function of California having incredible volatility in seasonal precipitation, being especially Northern California being at the hinge point of the ENSO dipole. Um, and then also like the like ridiculous reliance on atmospheric rivers in basically making or breaking the water year. The, the prospectus for the upcoming water year is that we have La Nina in place. We have a, a three-peat of La Nina. Um, La Nina traditionally means very little in terms of seasonal precipitation for Northern California. Um, however, the last two years which, where we've had a La Nina, we've had below normal precipitation in Northern California. Um, we also have really warm ocean temperatures across the North Pacific <clears throat> right now. Um, so those things in combination are shifting the balance towards the, the models and the forecasts um, hinting towards another dry winter for the region. The problem, well, one of the problems, is that it's not just this year. This drought has been an ongoing issue. The last few years in particular have been some of the worst on record. If we look at the last three years in combination, these are the three driest years consecutively that we've seen in at least the last 120 years for the state. And so that's put us in a pretty big deficit in terms of precipitation. We're feeling the impacts of drought um, and drought actually is magnified by the fact that we have had some pretty warm temperatures along with the lack of precipitation. We look at the impacts of drought to um, natural systems. We have clearly seen that there's a lot of drought mortality in the forest across Northern California. Um, that's a function of both the last drought and the ongoing drought. We have fire, right? There are restrictions in terms of recreation due to drought, right? Low flows in some areas are limiting recreational opportunities. In the face of another La Nina winter with potentially below average rainfall ahead, what will it take for us to claw our way back from this drought? So to bust this drought, we do need to have, um, you know, a conga line of atmospheric rivers come through across the state, not one, not two, you know, we need a solid precipitation year. And something like that can um, mitigate drought impact, even though the sort of outlook is for a dry, shifting towards a little bit of a dry winter. Um, if we do get some well-timed atmospheric rivers that come through, that could change the fate of um, our drought situation entering a fourth year here.